Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, sports companion show. We're here, D'Anthony. We made it. Football made it. Sort of. Sort of. We're, we're back to gambling, at least. Mm -hmm. Typically, we would do a college football preview kickoff special. We've done that every year on Drinking Bros Sports. However, we're not able to do it this year because there is still one more vote on the Big Ten and Pac-10, I believe, at the end of the week is what we're hearing on that to determine whether or not they will come back in October to actually compete for a national championship. Now, this is a big deal because the top 25 has already been issued here, uh, both coaches and AP, and nine, nine of the top 25 uh, teams in the nation came from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Now, Pac-12 only had, uh, what, three? Uh, Big Ten had six teams in it. Yeah. Um, but some of the ones that are most notable, uh, obviously, we'll start with Ohio State at number two. They came in only 14 votes behind Clemson for the number one team in the nation. I Look, we mentioned it a little bit last week. We'll talk about it this week. I think that that is the only reason, Ohio State, that everybody is bitching about Big Ten football coming back. Nobody really cares if Pac-12 football comes back. Um, what we're hearing now uh, from sources uh, are the sources of our actual president of the United States, and that is it. That is all we know. I'm not going to report or talk about any of the other fucking rumors or hearsay that we've heard because it's all over the goddamn map, and I have not talked to one person who is actually in the know of what is going to happen with the Big Ten and or Pac-12, I have no idea. So I'm, I'm watching Trump's ins or, uh, Twitter the same way everybody else is. Yesterday, he got on and said, we are very, very close to starting Big Ten football. However, it might be without Michigan, Maryland, and Illinois mm. uh, because of their governors or their lack of interest. Well, look, I mean, at least Michigan will be able to say that there was one year in the last 10 that they didn't lose to Ohio State right <laughs> at that point. I mean, no, Michigan wasn't going to win anything anyways. No, no. They'll, they, they'll, like, it, it's, it's like watching the 90s Braves in the playoffs. Right. It's like watching the yeah, Milwaukee Bucks yeah. in the playoffs. It's like watching the Tampa Bay Lightning in the playoffs. Yeah. No matter how good Michigan seems to look, they always fuck it up. So who cares? Who cares about them? And nobody um, cares about Illinois or Maryland either. Although Maryland, no. Maryland from time to time fields a pretty good football team here and there. Like they one, do. Once every five or six years, they have a pretty decent team, but it's never going to be a national championship team. No, and look, they're great at basketball. So mm -hmm. uh, look, Maryland, all, all three of those schools, Maryland, Michigan, and uh, Illinois usually put up pretty good hoops teams. But we're not in hoop season. We're in, we're in football season. And if Ohio State wasn't ranked as high as they were, I truly don't think anyone would care at this point of like, great, play the pretend seasons when you want to mm -hmm. uh, play them. Um, one of the, the, the biggest pitches that I've heard is starting at Thanksgiving, and that has been from Kevin Warren, the, the president of the Big Ten, who not only deserves to be fired but drugged through the streets. Mm -hmm. um, that's the dumbest thing of all time. Uh, it, it will turn the Big Ten into the XFL, especially if the SEC um, and the Big 12 and uh, the ACC come off without a hitch. Even if they have one game where they have to miss or something like mm -hmm. that, like, and they're able to compete for a national championship, the, the Big Ten season then wouldn't be over until the end of January, maybe early February at that point. And... What's the point of that? Um, I, I don't see one. And, you know, we've got some breaking news here, uh, as in lack of confidence, uh, that the Pac-12 will be playing at all mm. uh, in October. Um, and that is the number two recruit uh, in the NFL, uh, Oregon's uh, offensive tackle. Um, what is he saying right here? This is breaking news. Is it, is it Panay? Uh, it's Beanie. B e n e i Sewell, uh, the the it's, this is ESPN's number two rated NFL draft prospect has just opted out of the season. That is right now that that happens. Uh, we're recording this the day before because we're getting ready for the live shows. We've got a live show on Saturday for the college football kickoff opener at uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot um, in downtown Austin. Uh, right off of 6th Street. Join us at 1 p.m. We will be drinking and getting fucked up 
all day until uh, uh, kickoff of the University mm -hmm. of Texas game. Um, that University of Texas game, drinkingbrostickets.com is now live. Um, that is live. You can buy your seats uh, with us and uh, enjoy the mother squeezing game with us. 25,000. They're going to allow 25,000 fans in the stands. Uh, let me see where we are sitting. That way you can go to drinkingbrostickets.com and uh, buy tickets with or around us. Uh, uh, here's why I'm saying with or around us. Because of the COVID, everybody's going to be spaced out across mm. the stadiums. I watched this over the weekend. They'll come fuck with you if you're getting too big of a crowd. Right. It's, but, it, look, there actually, isn't the that fucking, many tickets. The Washington Nationals general manager got kicked out of the game yesterday. <laughs> because he was in his booth or in his suite by himself not wearing a mask. Which is the craziest shit of all time. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm. What what is what is the point of that exactly? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how isolated do you have to be? I uh, it's it's weird. and why was the umpire looking up at his? I'm sure somebody from New York through the replay device called him and be like, "Hey, he's not wearing his mask. Get him out of there." Man, that is that is, the snitchery of that is fucking crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's see where our tickets are for Texas, uh, the Texas game. We are in uh, lower. We are in uh, section fifteen. Uh, row 35 is where we're at. So if you were in the Austin uh, or surrounding areas, San Antoine, and want to join us for the Longhorns game, uh, we're in section 15. So just get seats anywhere in or around that, and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, sit with each other. I, that's what a lot of people are doing at stadiums uh, these days. They're selling them in groups of four uh, this year. A lot of stadiums will be doing that. Um, uh, simply for the fact of uh, the social distancing aspect of it. Mm. Um, I heard the Cowboys might be doing six, but uh, they're selling them groups of two or four. So if you want to come, I, you won't be able to get one ticket um, because of COVID, but uh, you'll be able to get two or four. Go to drinkingbrostickets.com. And um, the, the, the beauty of this is we're about $10 cheaper than StubHub. Uh, that's the way we designed it because it was like, hey, man, how the fuck can we just lower mm. these fees so we're better than StubHub? We're about $10 beneath it. And... Uh, you can also just slide the tab over to see what they are with the actual fees built in um, because these tickets are coming from other brokers all over the world. They aren't coming from us directly. Uh, we just own the sites and uh, we're doing this. So that way you can come and see where we're sitting. You can hang out with us. You can party with us uh, at drinkingbrostickets.com. So we will be in uh, section 1515, row 35. Uh, and there's a, a couple seats in like row four, I think, because we had to split them up. There's six of us going, but join us. We'll be in that section. We'll all con can join together. They are serving liquor mm -hmm. at the game, uh, which is nice. I was wondering if they were going to do that or not. They are. Yeah. Well, They're I mean, serving it, booze. Shit. As of in 2018, no college stadiums had liquor. Mm -hmm. And now last year they kind of dabbled with it. And this year they're just going full ham, I guess. Full ham. They got yeah. bars mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Deep Eddie's. He's got a couple bars there, which we're huge fans of. Um, you and I went to Texas LSU last year. We've been to that stadium. Great stadium. It's a blast. Um, it's huge. It'll be even funner with only 25% capacity because then you're not fighting the crowds for anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna. when you say funner, you mean we're going to black out. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we've got the live show at 1 o'clock downtown. Uh, we'll be able to walk to the game, party, and then uh, get blackout drunk because the game's at 7 o'clock here that night. It's great. They're playing UTEP if, uh, if you're a UTEP fan. Um, so it should be fun. Uh, again, we're in Section 15. Go to drinkingbrostickets.com and get your tickets. Now, the weekend after, uh, September 20th, um, we will be going to the Cowboys-Falcons game. Um, uh, also, you can get you, those tickets are available right now on drinkingbrostickets.com. You can get anything there, by the way, anything at all. And we'll tell you where we're going to sit for that game next week. So if you want to join us, the only heads up we're going to give you with this season, and we said it last week, and I really want to reiterate it this week, is tickets are going to be sky high this year for all of these events because most of these capacities are at 25 to 50% for all this shit. Um, when you have that few amount of tickets to give away the markup from these brokers is going to be fucking insane uh we're not saying break the bank to go and meet us but we'll be there and we would love to party with you if you want to um and that was kind of the big deal of uh of having our own ticketing sites of drinking bros is so that you could go there uh you can sit with us you can join us and uh and, and the fees are at least cheaper than StubHub. 
Um, and, uh, and we can rage all year long next year when COVID is over and this, you know, magical fucking bullshit mysteriously vanishes tickets will go back to normal after that, but expect higher prices this year and, uh, at drinkingbrostickets.com. You can join us, uh, at this Longhorns game on Saturday or the following Sunday at Falcons Cowboys. And we're going to try to set up a live event, uh, the night before in Dallas to do a live show there. Um, again, with the college preview show being pushed uh, of who the national championship uh, winners are going to be, um, the reason why my, my my hot take on it is pushed is truthfully, man, and this is not the homer picking me, but I genuinely had Ohio State winning, winning it all mm. this year. And um, if they don't play, I'm going to have to reevaluate this. And... Uh, Man, I, I, I would probably lean towards Clemson, but I, I, I need to see a schedule fleshed out with all of the yeah. teams, I guess. So um, it's, it's really, really tough. Uh, a lot of people are high on Notre Dame this year. Um, they're in the ACC, which, look, they'll be able to steamroll the ACC. They'll probably have one loss, and it'll probably be Clemson. Clemson. And then they'll play. In the playoffs. Clemson in the playoffs, and they'll get fucking destroyed. Yeah, in the game. but, but the, the question becomes is if, if Clemson runs the table, they're number one in the nation right now, mm-hmm. if they run the table and they beat Notre Dame, and let's say Notre Dame gets in there at three, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say the SEC kicks the shit out of each other like we're both expecting this year, um, and there's two SEC teams in there, which, let's face it, will probably happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Notre Dame could end up in a three spot when – and then play again. The play them three team. times in one year. Oh, God. It's possible. The are they on Clemson's regular season schedule right they now? They are, I yeah. I think it's week three or yeah. something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on there. So if, if they played three times, man, what a weird season. Um, I'm sure it's happened before when they were less competitive teams. I don't right? know, like man. Like two SEC teams have probably played each other three times in a season before. Potentially. If they're in the same division. Yeah. Before, before the SEC had a... A conference championship, maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I'd be curious to see, but uh, we'll save the preview, the college football preview show till next week. There, look, there is a ton of odds on mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Obviously, double your deposit there. And we want to give you those odds because, um, uh, look, you can bet on the Heisman, which we do every year. We can bet on the national championship and the playoff teams every year, which we'll give you, but those odds aren't available right now until next week. So, um, at least as far as I've heard, and maybe you've heard differently, Dan, mm. next week is kind of the cutoff point, like September 15th. Um, I guess college football has got to have like 29 days worth of practice, mm. which they have had. Most of these schools have had. I know Ohio State and Michigan are practicing still every day. Mm. Um, the 15th would kind of put you around that October, and this is next week. Uh, the 15th of next week would put you at that, if they said, let's go ahead, Big Ten and play. That would put you at the October 15th start date. And uh, that would be able that they'd be able to make them eligible for the uh, for the playoffs mm-hmm. at that point. So if we don't hear anything next week, we will do a full college football preview show um, because the Big Ten and the Pac-12 will be out at that point. Um, and uh, and we'll get to that. In the meantime, though, I will say this because everybody's hit us up of like, "Hey, man, NFL starting this week, college football starting this week. Let's get those fucking odds that you guys are known for." which we will give you, and we are amped about that, at least. Um, uh, looking at this, before we get into the, the first games and all that stuff, um, I know I, I praised Roger Goodell last week. That'll probably go out the window when everybody kneels this week. But, you know, our, our sources who told us that the, they were going to cancel uh, preseason, which they did, and, uh, and push the season back to week five, uh, the, the week five got... It, it looks like it's going to happen now this week. Uh, the week five thing got pushed because the testing got better. And, and again, I really want to praise Roger Goodell because he waited. Um, the Big Ten should have waited. Mm. The Pac-12 should have waited to see. That, uh, look, NFL was holding out for one last miracle of this testing. It came through. I mean, the NHL is operating two bubbles, essentially, and they've had zero tests. Right. The NBA has had zero. Right. With one bubble. So it's like, I think... They probably figured it out. Well, here's the, here's the biggest issue with this. And, uh, and it's to go back to that show we did a couple months ago. Um, there is no bubble in the NFL. Right. So we don't know what's going to happen after the first week or the second week or whatever. Um, you know, there's a bunch of kids that just tested positive uh, for Rice University here in Texas. 
and they had to postpone the first two games. Um, that That's breaking news today. Um, because they're not operating in a bubble. So we're still kind of waiting to see what happens. MLB has also not been in a bubble, mm-hmm. and they've had a ton of fucking issues. Will that happen in the NFL? Have I don't they, have know. Have they had a ton of issues? They've had two kind of semi scares where they had to shut down three or four games, and that's pretty much it. Major League Baseball's had a bunch, yeah. Um, yeah, but so, they've had two major instances, and they had to cancel like about four games per team for them. But. Uh, so the Phillies, the Marlins, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, mm-hmm. and then uh, over the weekend, uh, three more got pushed uh, because of COVID, and they're yeah. going to reschedule those as double head- headers. Um, y- yes, I mean, look, it, you're looking at, it's affected six different teams now at this point. How many mm-hmm. teams are in the ML, MLB? 30? 32. 32? Yeah. Six out of 32, so you're looking at one out of five, then essentially like, Yes, you have. No, um, there are only 30. 32 is football. Football, yeah. yeah football, yeah. yeah. Um, so, w- yeah, I, well, look, one out of five is an issue. Um, the, the one issue I think you're going to have happen with college football is, look, we've seen this at Alabama right now. I mean, literally right now in Notre Dame and uh, NC State. Is college kids fucking party, man. They're young. They want to have a good time. And uh, everybody's boning. I get it, man. You want to drink and bone, dude. College is awesome. It's the best. So what's going to happen after these teams play, win their first game, and then go back to campus and celebrate? Um, they're going to get fucked up and bang people and get COVID. Right. Because every time, I mean, like every instance we've seen of people going back to school, that's happened uh, when it comes to college. But look, again, these people are at very minimal risk. They are. Um, but the coaching staff for the football teams might not be. There's a lot of fucking 50 to 70-year-old people, on, uh, particularly in college coaching staffs right so that's something to take into consideration as well so i asked a friend of mine i said look what's going to happen with college kids doing this um uh if they get covid and he said according to their new covid rules they will still have to sit out for 14 days so if i don't know let's say let's take the rice situation Mm -hmm. um you know a bunch of kids got sick they had to cancel games for two weeks now the SEC and the ACC and the Big 12, in my opinion, still did this correctly in the smart way. We have University of Texas football playing Saturday, this Saturday. Um, if there is a problem after this, this leaves you time to push it back a couple weeks and still make the playoffs, yep. right? So if you have to postpone some of these games, because you're all in conference, that allows everybody to do it safely and then reschedule these games um, and, uh, and still make the dates for the playoffs, now, look, Clemson and, and LSU uh, and Alabama, a bunch of kids got COVID. Can't get it again. I think they're going to have the least problems. Yeah. LSU and Clemson in particular. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, you got the, the herd immunity theory. And I think yeah. it's smart, man. Um, Ohio State had the same thing. They had a bunch of players get it too. Mm-hmm. Which is, look, is what you should do. You're young, you're healthy, you get over it, and then you go back and play again. Now, the NFL is different because you have a bunch of young guys who are fucking millionaires who are going to strip clubs. Um, yeah, I just had this conversation yesterday, but it wasn't about COVID. It was about there being a professional football team in Vegas now. Mm-hmm. So you and I have been there a lot in the springtime for shows or events or whatever, or for uh, hockey games with the Golden Knights. And you can see the spring NBA people, like the rookies. Yeah. And it's always like five or six dudes that are between six, six and seven foot tall. Yeah. With one little tiny person <laughs> as their chaperone, walking them around and making sure they're not getting in trouble. Yeah. Unless the NFL is planning on doing that, and I don't just mean this year for COVID, I mean into perpetuity mm-hmm. uh, with all the young, rich people that come through Vegas, there's going to be, they call it the Vegas flu, right. right? You go out and get fucked up and then perform like shit the next day. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a couple of interesting years to see as people adapt to that environment there, frankly. Yeah, and, and that, I guess that's my biggest... Uh fear with with football in general coming back because you're not in a bubble now if they were in a bubble dan like you said at the yeah. top with nhl and, and uh uh and the nba you're fine man i mean uh, you know i i imagine there's just too many fucking people because you know each each roster's got a 53 man mm-hmm. roster that it's like um and then the coaching staff and training and all that stuff like i don't know a bubble that's big enough to mm. facilitate all those guys for football no i no. mean if it, like you have to practice during the week, which means you're bringing the practice squads. You're talking about 80, 82 players mm-hmm. plus another probably, what, 60 staff at least. Right. I mean, that's that's a lot of people. So it's, it's a lot of people. Um, so I, I'd be hard pressed to, to believe that we're going to make 
make it through both college and NFL season unscathed. Yeah. However, I'm, I'm amped that it's back and I'm amped that they're trying mm-hmm. um, because you and I have been in agreement on, on this COVID bullshit the, the entire year so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not fucking pussies. We're Americans. Um, you know, and uh, these kids are young. The NFL players are young. Everybody's going to be fine. Let's give it a shot. And I'll admit, man, I, I did because I'm at home with my two year old this weekend. My wife is in uh, North Carolina with uh, the other one, as we call him. Um, and uh, so I've been with him the entire weekend. He's been fantastic. All, we've had football on all Saturday, all day long. Mm. I don't give a shit who these teams were, how fucking boring they were. I went and bet on all of them on my bookie, no lie, and uh, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. But um, um, I, I got to watch college football again. There was fans in the stand. Uh, there was spreads. There was magic. Like mm. It didn't. It didn't bother me as, as I thought it would, man. Like uh, I was just amped about football being back, and uh, and it was fun. It was fun, man. There was no there was no politics in it either, man. There was nothing on the field. Uh, it was just young college kids fucking knocking the shit out of each other, and it was a blast. Well, it's about that time. It is about that time. So we'll see. So we will see. And then next week, again, uh, once we have f- official word. From the Big Ten and the Pac-12, we will give you the the preview uh, to to all you SEC fans out there, uh, all you LSU fan. We have a lot of LSU fan listeners and uh, Bama fans and all those guys. Um, if the Big Ten and the Pac-12 decide to come back in November, I really, really want to fucking make this clear. I do not believe that they should be able to to compete for a national championship, and I do not believe that the, the college football playoffs should push for those two conferences because they couldn't get their shit together um, and they didn't want to wait as Roger Goodell waited um, because everyone and their mother, GM-wise in the NFL, thought the NFL season was going to get pushed five weeks. He said, hang on, let's wait for testing. Um, They did not do that in the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Therefore, you want to play a fucking XFL season and start around Thanksgiving. You do not deserve to be in the conversation. The next round of polls that come out next week after these games this weekend should not include any Big Ten teams or Pac-12 teams. Mm. Get them the fuck out of there, That'll including be Ohio State. Yes, get them out of there. Uh, they don't deserve it because they couldn't pull their shit together. The Big Ten is a goddamn car crash right now. Um, I've never seen anything like what's going on in the Big Ten. You have no answers. You have no transparency. Uh, it took the eight players from Nebraska mm. suing to actually get uh, to see what the vote was. And even then, the chancellors and the presidents were like, yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of voted, but we didn't know we were voting together, what the fucking story yeah. was. They're, that lawsuit is continue on, continuing on, and they're looking for answers. And it's like, you should have waited. This is the the only good thing that Roger Goodell has done in the history of his whole fucking tenure yeah. uh, is wait for better testing, and it's here. Shit, the new one that just came out uh, a week ago is the five-minute testing. Mm-hmm. Even better. It's going to help these athletes even more, and it's like, why didn't you just fucking wait? Um, in the meantime, look, I'm wearing the Texas hat again. I'm, I'm adopting the Longhorns as my team this year, and I will root for them like Ohio State if they don't fucking play. Um, and we'll be at the game, and I'll be cheering my dick off in row or in, in, in section 15, and you can join us, dude. Go to drinkabrostickets.com. Uh, in the meantime, D'Anthony, uh, before we get to the sponsors, I want to get your take on uh, Major League Baseball. I did not realize that we were – on game 40 out of 60 already yeah. for Major League Baseball. Yep. Holy shit. Um, that is really gone quickly. Yeah, it's uh I mean they've been doing a lot of the uh a lot of the uh seven inning double headers as well, which is kind of interesting to be honest. Like, I haven't I uh, full disclosure, I have not watched them. I'm kind of a fan of that. You are because so- I I think that might be one of the things that baseball adopts moving forward because anything to make uh to drive up demand while lowering fucking uh, the availability of the product mm-hmm. will make you more money in the long run. Technically speaking, it's just market economics, right? So I think uh, the ability to carve out four and a half hours of somebody's afternoon, but they get two separate baseball games versus three and a half to four hours mm-hmm. for one game, I think is a big deal. The ability to do that now is a big deal. And I yeah. think it's something that makes financial sense for the MLB to do it. But yeah, this is this is the one moving really fast. The funny thing is, most of our calls, by the way, I was I look at the standings mm-hmm. last night. Most of our calls are coming true. Yeah, Tampa Bay and the Braves are in first. We said, look, pick all younger teams and I, and I that said, can sustain a pace. Like I this. said, pick the Padres too. Yes, I, and all, all fucking this dude. 
Fernando Tatis Jr. is losing his mind right now. Greatest player in the league He might be. It's right him or now. Trout right now. They're, yeah. they're the best hitters in the league. Does Mike Trout exist? He feels like Iowa to me. He's got. He's leading the league in home runs again, mm-hmm. and nobody has seen him hit one of them. No, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not that anybody's going to games right now, but he's on. If this were a full-length Major League Baseball season, he's on a pace for about, I think, 64 home runs right now. Right. And it's been going on for a month and a half. Yep. Which is, a, I mean, he's the best. I think he's the best player to ever pick up a bat. That ever. no one has ever yeah. heard of. I mean, look, <laughs> I, I don't know what it's going to take. He's still technically in the L.A. area. They should be able to get fans there. Like there should be, there's enough people in Anaheim to fill that stadium every night. So the problem there is, and, and look, I, I've been to that stadium. It's beautiful. It's a great experience. If you haven't gone to an Anah- Anaheim Angels game, uh, yeah, it's a it's a great stadium. Great stadium. Um, big fan, big fan of their garlic fries in the uh, right field stands. By the way, too. Uh, well, it's an unknown fact that a lot of people don't know. Um, the problem with Anaheim is this. Uh, it, it's an LA town for the Dodgers. It is still a Dodgers town mm. uh, through and through. And it, same with the Clippers, man. Like, the Clippers are there. No one really cares. It's still about the Lakers. Yeah. Um, and I just, it, it's kind of a throwaway team that, uh, you know, if you live in the Anaheim area, congratulations, you're mm-hmm. going to go. But for whatever reason, man, market wise, LA just promotes the Dodgers more than the Angels. And I guess partially, rightfully so, the, the Angels haven't put a product on the field that's good enough. Um, they haven't competed for a World Series since. I actually went the last time they were in the World Series. It was in 2003, Three. I think. Yeah, against the Giants. Yes. I was at, uh, game, I went to game one, actually. It's when, when Bonds uh, crushed that fucking ball into the... When Dusty Baker's child almost got ran over yeah. by... Uh, who was it? Their first baseman, the Angels' first baseman. Who was it? I don't remember. And somebody dragged him out. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right, right. Then it's... they made him fucking get rid of his kid in the dugout. And yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That yeah. might be what led to Adam LaRoche retiring at some point. <laughs> because that's that's kind of what he said. He yeah. Like, People are, don't want my kid in the dugout, so I'm not going to play anymore. Which is like, that's kind of unreasonable. He, from you know the money he walked away from? A lot, yeah. Like, but that's fine. Like I mean, $9 million. It's, I think he made the right decision because he's probably at peace with his decision. And that's what he wanted to do for mm-hmm. his family. But don't criticize the baseball team for being like, well, you can't just have your kid here all the time. Dude. No. Like, it goes both ways. They both made good decisions there. There's no reason for any animosity between the two. It's like dogs in the office. Yeah. Um, in theory, it sounds great. Everybody will be happier because their own dog's in the office. Uh, when, look, you saw a black rifle. I mean, it's just fucking... Mm-hmm. Dogs are pissing all over the goddamn hallways there. Um, can't do it. You can't do it. And uh, look, I love my dog. Dan loves his dogs. Um, RIP to mine, but uh, yeah. uh, you love your dog. And it's like, but you can't do it in the, in the workplace. Same with kids in Major League Baseball. I Look, I have two kids. I don't bring them out to dinners or whatever unless there's a cancellation of a babysitter. <laughs> not, not for me. It's because I don't want to put other people out to make them feel obligated that they got to do some shit with my kids, you know? Uh, same thing with Major League Baseball. So I understand it. Uh, I wouldn't have walked away from $9 million mm. if I was out of I mean, Roche. He, he's made plenty of money. Yeah. But look, the, the teams that we said in this youth thing, and I think it was Aubrey Huff on the show. Yeah, who, he, uh, he, was, he, was, he was really big on Tampa Bay. Huge on Tampa Bay. Yeah. And that's when I got on the train, and then we bet it after the show. I, I think we said it live on air. I was like, yeah, I'm going all in now. Is it makes sense. And, mm. and once we thought about it and we talked it out on the next show, it was like, all right, great. We're in a 60-game season. Let's pick youth. Braves, Padres, Tampa Bay. Uh, I had the A's in there. I'm not sure. The A's is the only team I didn't check on. Um, Um, What do you mean? Like how how they're doing right now? Yeah, how are they doing right now? Uh, uh, They're up by three and a half games right now over the Astros. Look at that. Um, Yeah, it's Tampa Bay and Toronto, two young teams at the top of the East. Uh, The White Sox and Indians and uh, Twins are all like within a game and a half of each other in the Central, which is not. Those are all three very good teams. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because they're all three going to be in the playoffs this year with this weird, uh, this weird new format. Yeah, I think. Um, then Austin, Oakland and Houston are really close. Um, then Braves and the and the Phillies and and Marlins are right behind them, three and four and a half games out respectively. And then the Cubs and Cardinals, as you would expect, are right there neck and neck in the NL Central. And the Dodgers and Padres are really close to one another there. I think the uh, the Padres are definitely going to win the wild card over there. They've won they're, They've won the third most games in Major League Baseball right now. Yeah, a fu- fun team to watch, man. Yeah. And uh, and the Braves have been in fuego. And uh, the Padres just picked up a few uh, players, didn't they? They did. They got the pitcher from Cleveland. Rosenthal? Uh, Not Rosenthal. That was... Uh, Clevenger? Yeah, Clevenger, the one that, that mm-hmm. but, uh, all of his teammates got butthurt because he went to dinner. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so he's there. Uh, they get a decent shot. Um, I, I'm looking forward to the playoffs this this season. Oh no, they did get Rosenthal too, too. From uh, so he went to where did he? Yeah, he came over from from there too, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Or if no, he came from Kansas City. Kansas City, right. yeah. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Our boy Archie Bradley got traded to the Cincinnati to the Reds, Reds yeah. man. I, I don't get that one. <laughs> I don't either. But it looks like I mean Cincinnati's not a fun town either. No, Arizona <laughs> Arizona just had a fire sale basically. Yeah, uh, they do every two years, it seems like, down there. But uh, I feel bad for Archie, man, since he's not a fun city. Uh, mm, he'll be all right. <laughs> he's got a hot girlfriend, and he hunts. He's fine. Yeah, he's got this. Uh, it's called Crash Landing Outdoors. Mm-hmm. All one word on Instagram. If you're interested in going to Oklahoma and hunting things, he's got like a guided hunt uh, out there that's really dope. We're going to go out there as soon as the baseball yeah. season's over and hang out with him a little bit. He's great, man. And, uh, uh, and lastly, uh, before we get into the spreads, Dan, I want to praise you for your Milwaukee Bucks uh, choke pick. That well, they haven't did lost yet. The playoffs. Uh, it's 3-1. <laughs> They're down 3-1. It's, yeah. uh, it's over. Um, truthfully, they should have lost yesterday, but uh, Miami took it easy once uh, the Greek freak went out of the well, game. Well, now Giannis, is, he's, there's no way he's playing. No fucking way. He, Maybe. Like, he's in a boot now. They're like, he's receiving round-the-clock treatment. This is the second time in the series that he's hurt the same ankle. Yeah. So I, look, I, there's, no, there's no way. And if I'm him with one year left in my contract, yeah. I don't play the rest Fuck of the series. No. What's the point? It's 3-1. Three, it's three, All I saw was a lot of people sh- uh, photoshopping him into Golden State Warriors uniforms. Because, mm-hmm. look, if he comes back and says, I'm not signing that Supermax deal. Yeah. Um. He technically only has one year left on his contract. Mm-hmm. The Bucks will be forced to trade him by the trade deadline of next yeah, year. Yeah, but they're not, who are they going to trade him for? Andrew Wiggin and somebody else? I mean, I don't know. Like on the Warriors, I mean, to get any, anything commensurate back in cap space. Right. In that or situation. they could trade him someplace else and try to get something else. Yeah. And I hope he, he resigns there. That's a, that's a big boy gamble. On I'm sure that. they'll trade him. But look, I think. Uh, I don't know. I, part of me thinks he'll sign, and, and I he, haven't. He might stay in Milwaukee. He seems to like the city, and they definitely like him. But I, I think he, I think it would be good for him to go somewhere else, um, because he's at. And, and maybe maybe that's not true, just because of the the example I'm going to give now. So Jordan had this, I don't know, albatross around his neck for years in the '80s about how he couldn't get past the Pistons, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're you're. You're great. You're the best player in the NBA, but you're not a good enough leader to get your team past this other team. And then finally, it happened. Uh, Giannis is in that point in his career now. Where he he's clearly not a good enough leader to lead his team to victory. Right. Like last year against the Raptors, they won the first two games, looked really good, and then all of a sudden they lost four in a row. Like if you lose four in a row in the playoffs, you shouldn't have been there in the first place. I don't care who the matchup is. Right. I, I think with Giannis, he's still. It's hard to believe, but he's still super young. Yeah, he's like 23, I yeah. think, right? Uh, so to grow into the leader of the team, um, it, takes, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, yeah. if, he, if he decides to stay, I can promise you he will be more vocal and he will be out there. Um, he was certainly out there during the protests and all of that stuff. Um, the one thing that leads me to believe that he might stay is the ratings of the NBA. The ratings of the NBA are so shitty that when this new collective bargaining agreement happens and they go over the ad revenue money, I was going to go back in, your salary cap's going to be smaller. Yeah. If I'm him, I take that super max deal of, what is it, $400 million or something fucking crazy? Like, uh, it can't be that much. I, I think it's like 450 or... No way. For five years? Um, what was Steph Curry's? It was like 220, right? I believe so at that time. I think you can get... F- well, maybe I'm wrong, dude. Uh... Let's see. It's high. I want to say that they said close to four hundred million on TV the other day. But it can um, be worth up to thirty-five percent of the total salary cap, with eight percent escalation per year after that. There you go. So maybe over the course of yeah, the contract. Yeah, yeah. Over yeah. the course of the contract, yeah. So if I'm him, looking at these NBA ratings dwindling, mm-hmm. um, I I think I take it, man. I I've seen. Look, it's, it's been a hit and miss with athletes, right, with, with taking these deals. We just saw Desh- Deshaun Watson sign one over the weekend, mm-hmm. uh, and his was for $161 million. That's a good deal for both of those clubs, by the way, or both I, I agree, but there was people that were bitching on Twitter that were like, well, Mahomes got 450 you mm-hmm. know? It was like, or five, $500 million. Um, Look, Mahomes was for 10 years, first of all. Uh, Deshaun Watson's is for four. Yeah. Uh, the other thing about it is, when you're a running quarterback like that, 
they're not going to sign him to a 10-year deal. No. Ever. Like, and Lamar Jackson will never, unless his game shifts, he won't see a long-term deal like that either. I don't no. Think. Whereas Mahomes does not have to run at all. No. All he has to do is stand in the pocket and well, chuck I mean, all day he, long. He, he runs because he laterally can. and not yeah, up and yeah, down yeah. the field. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's what, being a scrambling quarterback is different than being a running quarterback. Definitely. Because fucking, I mean... Look, the, it would be the difference between like Joe Montana was a great pocket passer, but some of his most famous passes, like the pass, for mm -hmm. example, uh, was, you know, particularly scrambling to his right. He was very proficient at doing that. And so is Mahomes, although he's somehow figured out how to throw sidearm scrambling to his left and still be accurate. I have no idea how he does it. Um, but then you look at uh, uh, the uh, Steve Young, who replaced Joe Montana, and he was a running quarterback for the first half Boy. of his career and it fucked him up uh, his like he he got 80 concussions and then he had to stay he had to stay in the pocket at that point yeah you know what i mean and it definitely ended his career earlier than it should have ended he ended his career over on that sideline uh getting wiped out man that was one of the most vicious hits i've ever seen uh but yeah um i i think it's a great deal for deshaun watson and like dude in today's world right now mm -hmm. with everything that's happening take the fucking money dude mm -hmm. we don't look sports isn't even promised right now um, I would sign, take the money, enjoy your life. Like it is, there is plenty of money. You will probably never be able to spend that much money. Uh, it's like Dak, Dak Prescott. For, to me, I would not risk that extra five million a year just to say I'm a forty million dollar quarterback. The Cowboys yeah. offered thirty five. Like, bro, what if he gets knocked unconscious this year, breaks his fucking leg? Congratulations, you just lost three hundred million dollars. It, it makes no sense to me. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't understand this. Uh, but we'll get to the Cowboys spread here in a second. First and foremost, we get some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Uh, KillCliffCBD.com has been my lifesaver throughout uh, this entire pandemic, to be honest with you, man. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Uh, by the way, it really does enhance weed. Why is that? Uh, I, if you're smoking weed. I don't know. I don't either. I feel it, great. It's something it's about great. Uh, full spectrum cannabinoids and things like that working together. But someone told me that that was the case one time. It is. Uh, had a fucking joint over the weekend. I can tell you it is. Um, after the kid went down, obviously. But uh, KillCliffCBD.com. It's got 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. And they ship to your house for free with the promo code Drinking Bros. Three flavors. Uh, grape, mango, and orange kush. I would highly recommend, because they just started doing this, uh, getting the variety pack. That way you get four cans of each uh, of 12 and it just gets shipped right to your house. I got I get busted, Dan, and I'm, I'm going to come clean live on air. Uh, I got caught. Caught doing what? Using my own promo code on QCBD.com, mm. promo code drinking. I just used mine twice <laughs> within the last week. So I used it uh, Thursday. I got two cases shipped to my house because I was out mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's got me in there. It's like a, a host promo thing. So <laughs> they're just like, hi, Ross. We know you're a host of the show. So therefore, we're automatically taking it out. No need to enter your promo code in of drinking bros anymore, dude. And I was like, oh, shit. I sat in shame, Killcliff, um, behind my computer. You, uh, you found out. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off and free shipping. You will not piss hot. There is no THC in any of this. It's great for uh, any type of joint pain or anything you have. Uh, or just unwind. Christ, dude. We've been drinking it with vodka all summer long. Next up, we got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Uh, GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros is... Uh, Best mattresses in the biz. Their Labor Day mm. sale is still going on 30% off of bundle packages. So bundle it up, kids. Uh, you can get everything. Pillows, sheets, mattresses, uh, covers, adjustable bases. Everything is possible um, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, sleeping wise. And if you're a member of the military or first responder, uh, work in the government or a teacher, you get 30% off forever. So it really doesn't matter. It's the rest of us dummies that, uh, that need this deal right now. As always, they got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros where there's no interest there, and all of these deals are applicable with that. So you can get a fucking amazing mattress set for mm. 35 bucks a month. You and I just got the adjustable bases. And, yeah, it's great. Uh, holy shit. It's a, it's a game changer for sure. Man. Um, and what, they, what have I been doing all these years? I've been talking to uh, the guys over there. Rich? Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, they were kind of interested. They saw, I think they saw some of the videos we've made for other, yeah, like yeah. Manscaped and, and Vincero and all those other guys. And they were kind of curious about us making one for them. I'm like, all right. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you ever heard the audio Roman ad. 
that <laughs> Ross and Jesse made, but ooh, man. Uh, it we'll could do get one weird. for it's our Instagram fucking, for it's a, sure. It's a bed, so it could get weird. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, but we're look, we're amped uh, to have them still as a sponsor. Uh, we love them, and uh, like their products are fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, last but not least, mybookie.com. Uh, that's where we do all of our bets, man. Um, they got a revamped site. Super easy, dude. I bet the Kentucky Derby with those guys on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And um, man, I, they, they're, they've got it dialed in, man. And uh, I just wish there was an app. Everybody's asking why they don't have an app. It's it's legally is why uh, yeah. the United like they States. Won't, you can, they can make one, but you would still have to go to their site and download it because it's not in the app store on Android. Correct. Um, it's, it's dumb as shit. Like, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But it's, it's, it's America, not yeah. uh, my bookie. Um, gambling is legal in all 50 states. However, uh, you have to do it within the fucking browser and not on an app. Uh, why? Because it would be too easy. What's the fucking reasoning behind that? It's like the dumb gun. Laws. I don't know, man. It's fucking stupid. I honestly don't know. Either way, go to mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. This is it, dude. This is our season when we make a fuck ton of money. Um, by the way, I hope the Golden Vegas Knights uh, win it all because we bet on them heavily. You gonna try that sentence again? Heavily. What's up? The go- the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, what do I call them? Golden Vegas Knights or something? Uh, golden Showers. Know. Who knows? Who um, knows? Look, we've been drinking. They we're lost last time. night by one, but it was, uh, one it was a slow game, and they had been off for a little bit, too. I, I, I kind of expected them to lose. I've got them in, uh, in uh, six games. I've got them in six. Uh, I, I was going to take them in five, but then they had that. They swept that last series. I'm like, well, they're going to be sitting around with their thumbs and their butts for a while. Yeah. That, that always, like, it's very rare that a team comes out hyped up still after a layoff like that. And same with the Lakers. The last other. night, for some reason, they started uh, Flurry again for the first time in like seven weeks. That was kind of weird. Odd. Yeah. Because the other guy's been doing pretty well. He's got three shutouts in the playoffs. I don't know if it's a matchup thing or what happened, but he only gave up one goal. Yeah, he looked great. Uh, yeah. Look, he, he looked fine. It was just uh, it was a boring game. Uh, it was one nothing. But uh, we're betting on mybookie.com. Uh, promo code Drinker Bros doubles your deposits. It's football season. We're back. Uh, man, that was the greatest college football season I've ever had last year as far as gambling wise. Um, uh, NFL, we did pretty. I, I did. You did better than I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was at 60. I think I finished 68 um, percent. Jesus fucking college. I was at 82. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was amazing last year. And uh, I started testing out some bets uh, over the weekend. Um, I, I, look, as always here, we try to go with top 25 matchups and not these weird schools because anything can happen. I just wanted to see, though, what the lines were like over the weekend. Mm-hmm. So before we get into the college games, I'll tell you what I bet in uh, bet on over the weekend. I bet the Marshall game. Um, Marshall was playing the Central fucking Kentucky or some mm-hmm. weird school, uh, whatever it was. But I wanted to check the lines and see what the spreads are like and how fast they're moving. Because of COVID and, and whatever else, right? You take that kid from Oregon that I was talking about at the top. Well, a running back had gone out for the other team and just said, I'm sitting out the season. I'm afraid uh, of China and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's obviously going to affect the lines. So I checked the Marshall game uh, probably about two hours before game time, and it was 22 and a half. And then I went and bet it about 10 minutes before the game started, and it was 25 and a half. Now, luckily, Marshall hung 52 on him and blew him out, mm-hmm. and it was fine. I also bet on Army as well. Uh, that turned out to be a, another banger of a game. Um, so I feel pretty good about betting these seasons without fans in the stands mm-hmm. because I think it still comes down to talent. And in particular, in college football, it's really a recruiting advantage, right? Um, where the harder spreads to pick this year, in my opinion, will be the SEC. Because I think the SEC, it really fucking matters home field advantage on, in mm. some of these games. Whereas some of these other conferences, I don't think it matters that much. Um, and you take an Ohio State and a Michigan, like those crowds are so big. It, it influences what's going to happen. But in some of these smaller schools, I don't think it matters. So you take this first game here. Um, we're going to go with the uh, the noon game. And just because we're central now, we're still going to give you Eastern times. So uh, I'm not going to do that to you and switch it on you. Um just because I'm the we're the assholes that moved to Texas, um, but we'll take the Syracuse game, which is a noon game on Saturday. Uh, we will be at the uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot uh, watching these games live, and you can drink with us and party with us uh, in downtown Austin. Syracuse versus North Carolina. I've got this spread here. I, as always, I'll read off ESPN. You'll do the my bookie ones so that way we can see who's betting on what and uh, and why. Uh, UNC minus twenty two. I've got UNC is the number 18th ranked team in the nation. 
Uh, UNC showed a lot of promise last year, uh, and they they should have, should have, Dan, won that Clemson game. Uh, it was pretty fucking close. Pretty goddamn. It came down to the one-yard line at the end yeah. of the game. I still don't know why when they went for two, they decided to call that running play with yeah. the quarterback. It was dumb, but it was a great game, and uh, uh, in my opinion, they should have won it. Youth was not on their side in that one. Um, but they're playing Syracuse, and it is minus 22. Um, now, with this, me personally, um, I'm going to buy a point and a half in this and take it down to 20 and a half. Because it is opening week and, and teams are getting going here, uh, look, I think North Carolina is going to be much improved. It's mm. going to be a fun game. But uh, three scores is all I'm willing to go on this. And I'm going to be betting all of these because, let's face it, it's the opening of college football season, and I need to know. Uh, so I'm going to take this down a point and a half and get it at 20 and a half and take North Carolina. Hmm. It's a lot of points, I understand. Um, the big point spreads over this past weekend, though, most of them came through, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to assume that the really good teams are going to be really good and everybody else is kind of... I mean, the thing that makes college football teams great is recruiting and good coach coaching is so much more important in college than it is in high in uh in the yeah NFL. and look north carolina's got mac brown yeah. um they looked good last year and they're only going to improve they got a bunch of great recruits and they're look they're a top 10 recruiting class mm. so far for 2021 right now i think there's a lot of promise in north carolina um and uh i'm gonna take it i'm gonna take that game um i might go the no nah, half time i'm gonna go the whole game I'm gonna go the whole game on that one. Well, it's still it's minus twenty two on uh, on uh, oh, my bookie, my bookie as well, and the money line is minus thirteen forty for uh, for North Carolina. Obviously, they're not gonna lose this game. No, they're not gonna lose this game. But... Um, the over under sixty five. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, if they win by twenty two, that's that helps. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna bet this one. I, I don't think I don't think North Carolina is gonna be that good. I mean, I think they're going to be a good team. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're going to be blowing people out by 30 every week. I don't either. I, I think by three scores, though, I think they're much improved. And uh, I, I'm fine with it. Um, this is the, look, this is the first big game. And when I say big game, I mean I have the Power Five uh, that's going to be kicking it off. And since we're raging that day, I want a little money going on in the background. Probably throw a hundo on this, uh, 20 and a half. Uh, from mm -hmm. North Carolina, so I'm going to take this down a point and a half. By the way, if you're not signed up for Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook, I, I post all of my betting slips in there, so you can see what we're actually betting on and how much for all this shit. Uh, so join it. It's free. Just one rule. Don't be a cunt. That's it. Um, I understand they're sitting this one out, for sure. Hmm. I might go the other direction, actually. I might buy two and a half points. And go Syracuse? And then go Syracuse, because that's a big payoff. And then you don't have to risk What is the money. payoff on that? Um, well, even buying two and a half points, if I put down a uh, hundred, I'm going to win sixty-two bucks, which is a pretty good deal because I don't think North Carolina is going to score fucking sixty points here. Yeah, I just don't believe that. So we'll see. Well, I'll think about it. Yeah, I haven't decided on that one yet because I don't, I don't know, I don't know, man. Like I know North Carolina is going to be better this year, and they had a pretty good season last year. They're trying to build. I think uh, Mac Brown's got a chance to make them into an analog for Clemson in that in that. Conference. I do too. I did too. And this, I mean, if, if they're on the same track as Clemson, this would be their 2014 year, which is when they won the national championship. Right. Remember that. Because right. 2013, they were very much improved. 2014, they just fucking blew it up. So you never know. Maybe fucking North Carolina becomes a top 10 team this year. Yeah. Um, I, I think they have a decent shot at it, especially if uh, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they're shooing for that, I think. Uh, next up uh, on the Nooner game on ESPN, We've got the uh, Louisiana Raging Cajuns against Iowa State, the Cyclones. Um, Iowa State has given zero fucks about COVID, man. They had a bunch of fucking outbreaks there, and they were like, sorry, yeah. we don't care, we're playing, and yeah. we got fans in the stands. Um, this line is only minus 11, and I don't know why. Um, what, you, what would you expect it to be? The, for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns? Fucking 20, or 18 at least. 11 seems low. It does, uh, and it's technically – it's in Ames, too. Yeah. So, it does, I, I mean, I, it, that's weird. That is weird. I'm taking this game. Yeah, I, I think I'll they win that. by two touchdowns for sure. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, I'm not sure what the fucking sentiment is on uh, Louisiana, but that's an awfully low spread. Um, so, 
We'll, we'll see, man. I, I'm I'm puzzled by that, but yet I'm taking it. I'm going to take it as soon as the show's over. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you. Next up on that two thirty game, uh, we got Duke at Notre Dame. Uh, look, man, I've seen a lot of pundits out there picking Notre Dame to be in the college football playoffs again. The Big Ten and Pac twelve are out of this. I have a feeling we're going to be saying that a lot uh, over the next week. But uh, uh, Notre Dame is minus twenty in this game. Uh, it is in Notre Dame. Uh, Duke is fucking awful. Yeah, they're really bad. Notre Dame is returning virtually every starter, including including Ian Book. Uh, they won their last seven games of the year last year. Uh, Kalen Cothran. This is the first time I've ever gotten your name right. Um, and uh, this is the first time I've ever, I'm, I'm picking uh, uh, Notre Dame uh, on the show. It's actually minus uh, 19 and a half on Ooh, my book. Ooh, so people are betting Duke? People are betting Duke. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do it, man. I think, look... I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give some, some uh, Notre Dame fans and their university some shine here. Okay, um, I, I know we're always hard on them, and uh, they're always overrated. And they're, look, they're still overrated this year, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, the inside scoop behind college football: if Notre Dame does not join the ACC, I don't know that there is college football this year. Yeah, um, that was a big, big deal, and uh, them going to the ACC saying we want to play. Um, convinced every other college of like all right if notre dame's gonna do it with their huge ass tv contract yeah uh we better fucking play and uh, i think it was a a massive shock to the big 10 that they fucking did this and uh good for them man Uh, notre dame team wise is the mvp of why college football is playing this year no one really knows that or is talking about it but it is the god's honest truth uh and they made a power play a day before the big 10 and the pac-12 decision by saying we're going to the ACC and we're fucking playing a full schedule. Fuck you guys. Um, because football is life at Notre Dame. Yeah. And uh, for that reason, Dan, I'm taking Notre Dame. Well, at 19 and a half. I'm, I, I would ex- have expected this to come out at 21 or 21 Same. and a half or something I did like too. that. Maybe it did. Maybe it's, I mean, it's been up for a couple of days. It's been now. up for actually two weeks on my bookie. Yeah, but, so uh, I, I don't know what the, the movement's been on that, but fuck, man. Yeah, it's weird. I'm going to take Notre Dame, man, uh, for saving college football this year. And, uh, again, just because my team's out of it, I don't give a shit. I love college football. Mm-hmm. I'm amped that I get to see it on Saturdays. Um, I'm amped. There's a game on tonight. We're recording this a day in advance. But uh, that Navy-BYU game, I'm amped about that. Um, I'm taking fucking Notre Dame with this, and I think they win by three touchdowns. Uh, they look great towards the end of last mm-hmm. year. Um, and, granted, they didn't really play anybody, but they're also not playing anybody this Saturday yeah. either. Um, and Duke is shit Yeah. Yeah, Duke is about as good as Army. Yeah. Well, Army won. Army won over the weekend. Yeah. And they covered, and I bet that. Um, it was like the spread was like two and they won by 40. It's great. Um, I'm uh I am definitely, definitely taking this game, dude. Uh I'm taking Notre Dame. Uh I'm in it, man. You? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. At 19 and a half. Uh now the next one, Missouri State uh against Oklahoma. Um, I'm surprised that there is an out-of-conference game for the Big 12, but I guess they don't give a shit about anything. So uh, there is no – I have no spread on this, on this Oklahoma game. Um, where are you seeing this? Uh, it is the 7 o'clock game here. Um, but Oh, I see. I don't think there's a spread because I, I miss Missouri State, I believe, is an FCS school. Yeah, it's not on my book at yeah, all. Yeah, they don't, they don't give spreads for uh, games like this. Uh, however, it'll be a fun chance to see uh, Spencer Rattler play. Um, I've been – hyped about this kid for two years Mm. um he looks has the look of pat mahomes and uh we'll see man oklahoma has been able to churn out great quarterbacks over the years and uh they haven't been able to put a defense on the field they've been putting out great quarterbacks and this kid certainly looks like he's the the next uh best of the batch here and i'm i'm gonna check this game out just to see him Mm -hmm. i I just want to see him play man uh they put him in a a little bit of garbage time last year and uh i'm curious uh, to see this kid, but uh, yeah, man, Oklahoma's coming in at, at five right now. Obviously, they'll move up when Ohio State moves out next yep. week, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch them play. I'm surprised they're playing outside of a conference. I thought everybody was playing in conference this year. I guess not. Uh, Big Twelve doesn't give a shit. Uh, next up, so this is where College Game Day is going. A lot of people were asking, "Hey, is College Game Day going to be um, traveling?" to schools this mm-hmm. year because of COVID. Yes, they are. And they're going to this uh, Clemson-Wake Forest game. That's where they're going to be this weekend, Dan. Um, well. And the Clemson spread is – do you want to guess? Because this is the Clemson spread of every single game last year. Yeah, it's, it's going to be in the low 30s for every game. <laughs> Somewhere between 31 and 34 for every game. 
33, Dan, you nailed it. Uh, 33 against Wake Forest. Um, yeesh. I, I, I have a hard time with this. Uh, do I think Clemson's going to do it? Yes, absolutely. Um, they need to play. They need to get their practice in. Let's yeah. face it, this is a practice game. You and I, though, were at uh, the Clemson game last year against NC State. It was 35-0 to zero at the oh. end of the first quarter. And then after that, they kind of pulled their players. I, and they ended up covering. But uh, these are so hard to pick because it's like you don't know garbage time who's going to play and why. Yeah. Um, I will say this. The rosters are smaller. So there is a chance that better players are going to be on the field. If you're taking this game, you're a fucking huge Clemson fan. It's down to 32 and a half. Ah! <laughs> you don't say. So people are taking uh, Wake Forest in this. Yeah. Um, I'm not one of them. I stay away from a spread this big. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ever betting a spread over 30. Jesus Christ, that's, that's massive. But welcome to Clemson in the ACC again. Uh, you're going to get these low 30 spreads mm -hmm. all season long, except for North Carolina probably and uh, Notre Dame. And that's it. Uh, next up. Tulsa, Oklahoma State, Big 12, is is doing out-of-state games. Yeah. Um, I mean, out-of-conference games. Out of Go, conference. Going on them. They don't give a shit. Uh, this one is at uh, minus 21 and a half for Oklahoma State, who is coming in ranked at number 15 in the nation. 22. Ooh. So everybody's betting uh, Oklahoma State already. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But <sighs> buy a point. What's the point in not buying a point? There? Yeah, I would buy... I'll, I'll do this game just to buy a point on it. Um, Oklahoma State's offense is fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it's a 730 game. There, there will be fans there. There mm -hmm. will be fans in the stands. So, I, you know, shit. If I'm there, I mean, look, you and I are going to be the Texas game. We're going to be fucked up mm -hmm. rooting for Texas. So, yeah, man. Uh, I'll buy a point and take this down to 20 and a half just to do it. Um, yeah, I'm down with that. It's not going to be my biggest well, bet of the weekend. It's going to be 21 though cuz it's 22 right now. Oh, it's 22. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I'll take I'll take a point to push, I guess. Uh just to do it on this one. This is not going to be my biggest bet of the weekend, but I'm going to do it just because uh it's opening weekend and fuck it. Uh YOLO. Uh next up is the game we're going to be at. UTEP. Want to know <laughs> if the college football playoffs uh started today they would be in it or not? I don't think so. Uh, they're playing uh, Texas. Uh Oof. Deep in the heart of Texas. It's the 8 o'clock game, 7 o'clock for us. I don't know why there's even a spread on this. There isn't. There is. Ah! My bookie has got Texas at minus 43 here. Woo! <laughs> I kinda wanna, I'm going to bet I'm it bet just it because too, we're going to yeah. be there. That's it. There is no spread on ESPN. I'm going to put 100 bucks on that just because... We're going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing funner, too, than getting drunk and like hammered towards the fourth quarter and rooting... Yeah. For the team that's already up by 50 to, to, yep. to hold on to that one touchdown lead. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet Texas. Fuck it. What is it? 43 and a half? Mm -hmm. It's great. All right. I, I'm in. Uh, yeah. I, look, I'm all in no, on Texas. It's 43 this year. minus 43. All right, cool. I'm all in on Texas this year. So let's do it. Uh, just because we're here, not in real life. But uh, last but not least, uh, this game is actually postponed. This is where we were talking about, Dan. Uh, Florida International versus UCF. Uh, they have postponed their game due to COVID. So uh, it is going to happen. Um, but if you start the season early enough like this, you can at least make these games up. So mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Um, but, uh, man, I'm going to be lighting up my bookie this weekend. This will be fun as shit. Again, come to Whiskey Tango Foxtrots in downtown Austin. We will be there doing a live show this day, watching the games with you and getting rocked. Uh, with uh, the beautiful people of Austin, Texas. Uh, NFL, let's switch on over, let's switch gears here. Um, man, this is a great game to start off the season, and uh, I'm super amped for it. Both quarterbacks who we just talked about are playing uh, with new contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, the Texans against the Chiefs, Deshaun Watson against uh, Pat Mahomes. For whatever reason, the Texans always play the Chiefs tough, um, it's a it's a hard game to choose, and this spread is big. It is nine and a half for KC. Um, man, uh, that is a big big spread. Um, and there there's fans in the stands. So by the way, if you want to buy tickets, go to drinkabrostickets.com. You can buy tickets for this game. You can be at the very first NFL opener, which will be a blast. Um, if we didn't have a live show two days later, we'd be there. Uh, nine and a half for KC. Yep. What, what say you on this? Uh, yeah, I'm all I'm I'm taking the nine and a half. 
Oh, you're all in. Yeah. You're taking Kansas City. Yeah, they're going to fucking de- – look, man, there's never been a collection of offensive weapons put on the field like they have in that city. I agree. In the history of the NFL, in my opinion. Like, the only thing that I can think of that came close was uh, the greatest show on – like the Oh, the greatest show on turf. The, the Rams. The Rams, with yeah. With Kurt Warner and all those guys. Man, like Isaac that, Bruce and Tory Holt. Tory Holt, yeah. I mean, Marshall was, Falk. It, it, there was a special collection of people there, but uh, I don't. I don't think – We'll see what happens. Maybe something happens and people figure out how to defend this dude. But yeah. Like they had all year last year to do it, and they had all year the year before that to figure it out, and nobody figured it out. As a matter of fact, they got so they got Warriors bored. They got bored and started losing all their playoff games in the first half and only playing the second half of games, and they still won. Yeah. Yeah, look, uh, the Chiefs are at home. Um, this is their ceremony for the Super Bowl. They're going to be raising the flag there and, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Patrick Mahomes, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Hilaire Tyreek no. Hill, Sammy Watkins, Mahol, McCole Hardman, and uh, Travis Kelsey. I mean, what the fuck are we even talking about here? Here's what we're talking about. Deshaun Watson is able to make miracles happen. He's got an entirely new team this year. I, look, David Johnson is my sleeper this year for fantasy. Uh, I've said that he's going to win comeback player of the year, and I fully believe that. Um <sighs> Brandon Cooks, they've got Will Fuller five, who's healthy. This I, this could be a shootout, man. I'm, god damn it, it's the first NFL game of the year, so obviously I'm going to bet it. Mm-hmm. I'm having a real hard time with this point spread, to be honest with you. I think it should be seven and a half, uh, and typically I would have bought in a point. I was not expecting this is too high. This is really high, nine and a half. Um, mm, mm, mm. The over is fifty four and a half. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this instead, okay? I don't want to touch this nine and a half. I'm, I'm obviously going to bet the, the fuck out of this game. Uh, it's the NFL opener. We're going to get hammered and, and, and watch this. Uh, I'm going to take the over in this game at 54 and a half mm-hmm. and, and go all in on that. Not touch this spread. Um, because I think it could be a one touchdown game, to be honest with you. I mean, the Chiefs still don't have the greatest defense. Not the greatest but they're a top 10 defense. They're okay. No, they're not okay. They gave up more possession time than a lot of other teams because they score quickly and often, and they still were in the top 10 of the league in points allowed. In the playoffs last year, when the Chiefs played the Texans, the Texans were up 24 to zero. Yeah, because the Chiefs were fucking bored. In the second quarter. I understand. Um, But the Texans know how to score on this team for whatever reason. Uh, So here's why, here's my hesitation. I bet this game, the, the first game last year, uh, and I got burned. I, I took the Chiefs, um, and, uh, and the Texans covered. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the Chiefs, even though they were down 24-0, to not only did they come back, they, 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 they covered that playoff game, and you and I yeah. won because we bet the Chiefs in that game. Um, I'm not sold on that. I'm going to take the over-under on this, and I'm not going to go the, the Chiefs at 9.5. I'm just not going to do it. Just saying that game that they won over the Texans in the playoffs, they covered because they beat them by 20. They did. They did. Uh, look, I, I, I'm with you. that the, Chief, the Chiefs have the greatest offense in the world. It is week one, Thursday night. Uh, I'm going to take the over and, and enjoy the game versus that 9.5. That's just so many points. Um, whew, I don't know. Uh, but you're going to take it. So there we are. Uh, next up, we got Seattle against the Falcons. Man, shit. Russell Wilson, dude. Is he? Is, did the picture come with us? Did it make it on the journey? Is he over there, Dan? Uh, is he know. behind me? Um, I don't see it over here, but it definitely made it here. I don't know where it is. No, right it's now. right there. Oh, there it yeah. is. Yeah. There's Russell Wilson. Um, look, I picked the Seahawks to go to the Super Bowl this year. Mm. And uh, I'm not proud of it. I'm certainly not proud of it. And, uh, you know, the Seahawks never covered, which was great because I bet them all last year. They never covered. And I won. There was at one point I won five weeks in a row in Seahawks games. Um, the spread of this is one and a half. Uh, the Falcons' success is solely on the legs of Todd Gurley this year, in my mm-hmm. opinion. And um, our defense did not get better. So I, that's not a fucking thing for me. No. Uh, uh, that being said, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet the Seahawks in this game. Uh, yeah. At one and a half, I mean, that's basically, that's almost a coin Field toss. Goal. It is. Uh, and it's only a coin toss, I think, because of COVID. Otherwise, this should be on paper. Mm. This should be a six and a half point Seahawks spread, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. It's it's two on 
my bookie, but even that is low. I don't know why it's so low. If you want a great bet on this, take the over at 48 and a half. I mean, shit, dude. Yeah, that's definitely going to be. It's my seven touchdowns. Yeah. It's going to be way over that. Um, look, the Seahawks have a powerful offense this year. Uh, DK Metcalf, I believe you chose him in fantasy football. Mm. It's going to have a breakout year. That guy looked great last year, man. No, I didn't get him. I wanted him. Oh, you missed out on him. Yeah. Um, I, fuck, I, forget, I forget which league that is, but uh, either way. Um, I, look, the Falcons have always had a great offense. Um, the same guys are back. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. Now you got Gurley. Um, that, that Hayden Hurst kid at tight end is going to mm-hmm. be a, a great sleeper pick in fantasy this year. Um, but uh, I think the Seahawks are, are are too much, man. Chris Carson's healthy. I'm going to take the Seahawks in this game, and I have no hesitations about that whatsoever. No, I don't either. I, I mean, they do make games unnecessarily close sometimes, but they don't usually lose games they're supposed to win. And even if they do, the spread's, what, two? Yeah. Congratulations. That's a field goal. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. I'm taking the Seahawks in this. Uh, yeah, that's a good bet. I love you, Falcons, and I always will. You have a brutal schedule this year, and I we've got to see if Todd Gurley's healthy. If he is... It's going to be a great year for the Falcons. If he's not, it's going to be another shitty fucking year for the Falcons. So ugh, it is what it is. Uh, next up, we get the Jets at the Bills. Um, I could not be more all in on a team than this. Than, uh, uh, it's, minus, it's the Bills minus six and a half. Yeah, this is a, this is a fucking lock. Yes. I'm, I'm all in on the Bills. Uh, I love the Bills this year. Mm. Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen made a couple of dumb a bunch of dumb plays in the in the playoffs, or else he would have he would have beat the Texans. I would have even been a, a fucking thing last year. Yeah, um, in the playoffs. And um, look, they've only stacked their team even more, dude. I, I am fucking all in on the Bills. I'm all in on this game too. It's six and a half. That's my fucking lock of the week, dude. I don't I don't know why it's six and a half. I don't either, to be honest with you. I what do they think is going to happen magically to the Jets? I have no idea. I mean, the Jets were like in the middle of the pack in defense last year, so it's they not bought that. well. So they bought a bunch of, of great defensive free agents in the off season, but they didn't do anything in their fucking offense. So I, I, I don't know. Le'Veon Bell still hates the coach. Mm. He's gonna fucking uh, have a worse year than he did last year, which is hard to believe. Um, I don't understand the spread. I, I'm Buffalo all in, smash tables, dude. I'm fucking. I'm. I'll put five hundred dollars in this game. This is my biggest bet of the weekend. I think. Yeah, I think it's. A, I think I would consider this a lock. Same, dude. Fuck. At home, is there fans in the stands for this? Yeah, they're selling tickets. Yeah. Drinkingbrostickets.com. Go, go to the Bills game. Get fucked up, dude. Enjoy life. Uh, fuck, man. If there's any stadium that's going to catch COVID faster than anyone else, it's Buffalo. And they're going to go for it on week one. You mm-hmm. might as well. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Uh, go to the yes, Buffalo six and a half. Uh, next up, we got the Bears against the Lions. Detroit minus three in this. Um, now, Mitch Trubisky just got named the starting quarterback. So, is that yeah, I saw that mind? this morning. Uh, I hate this game, by the way. I'm not betting this game. No, I don't. I don't care about this game other than the fact that I have uh, Adrian Peterson in fantasy. Fan, frankly, He's third string though in Detroit right now. Yeah, so. for now. Um, but that team's not going to stay together. Come on. And he won't stay. He won't stay third string forever either. No, like he's he's still he's still he'll play for whatever reason. The the Ryan the Lions uh, running backs get hurt every year, Mm -hmm. so he'll be playing week three. Um, Yeah, I look. I I don't know the health of Matt Stafford. Uh, I still fear the Bears defense, and um, I think the Lions have the the, a nucleus though of a great team if Stafford is healthy. Could be, yeah. With uh, Marvin Jones Jr. Carry on Johnson looked great until he got hurt. Mm. They, they bought, they got uh, DeAndre Swift. Yep. And now they got Adrian Peterson. They got TJ Hawkinson. Uh, they should be great. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know about either of these teams, to be honest with you. Therefore, I'm not going to, I don't have any confidence in either of these teams yet to bet this. Um, I want to wait a, a, one more week to see uh, what this is. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Lions won, if Stafford's mm. healthy. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, are you touching this game? No, no, I'm not touching. I, this I game. don't. I don't really like betting on Bears games. They're, I don't either, man. It's they're like as a team too inconsistent. Like yeah. if you're predictably good or predictably bad, I'll gamble on you. But if you're fucking all over the place, then it's difficult. That's why I don't bet a lot on Seahawks games, unless the spread is super low. You know what I mean? Yep. Because they just don't cover that much. Yeah, they they, I'm they with only you. covered they like I think it was uh, four out of the first six games. They didn't cover something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Come on, Ian. Uh, so I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna dodge this one. Uh, next up, we got the Packers uh, at the Vikings. 
Um, again, you can get tickets are available for all this shit. Um, so go to drinkingbrostickets.com for all this shit. Fuck, man. That's crazy. Uh, even in Minnesota with their fucking liberal asses. I'm surprised. Uh, you can't have Big Ten football, but uh, you can have fans in the stands for the Vikings games. Um, crazy. Uh, the Gophers can't play, but the Vikings can. This is minus three for Minnesota. Um, is, is Dalvin Cook playing? What's his story? He was sitting out. Yeah. I mean, I haven't. I haven't heard any updates on that. I haven't either. Um, look, uh, Stefan Diggs is gone. Uh, they got uh, Justin Jefferson in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, man, on this one, I'm going to take the Packers. I think Aaron Rodgers, uh, now that his homosexuality is, homosexuality is out into the world, mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be a little more freer this year. And uh, he doesn't want uh, that that guy at a... Bryce, who, who is it? Bryce Love? Who do they draft? No, him? Bryce Love is the running, running back. back. Who is the uh, um, Love guy that they Jordan? They Jordan Love. Yeah. Um, is back there now. I, I think he's going to have to actually play this year. And I think Aaron Jones has a big game. So I'm going to take the Packers in this one, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take those three points. Um, well, you're in luck because it's down to two and a half. God damn it. Is it really? So yeah. people are betting the Packers. All yeah. right. Yeah. I, I, uh, I might buy a point or half a point. But uh, yeah, I'm taking the Packers in this mm -hmm. one. Um, I mean, I think the, the Packers have a pretty decent year, and I think Aaron Rodgers has a lot to prove now that they drafted a quarterback. Yeah, he's uh, – it's well, we're going to see uh, what his medal is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is he going to rise to the challenge, or is he going to fucking bitch out and try to force his way out of Green Bay? If he's a man or a little boy. Yeah, pretty much. We're going to find out. Uh, next up, we got the Dolphins against the Patriots. I'm sorry. Can we pick a new lock of the week? Dan, I apologize. I, don't, I didn't mean to do this to you right now. No, it's fine. I was just looking at that game, too, and uh, the... I don't... I don't. It's minus six and a half for New England. Is it still there at minus six and a half on, on my bookie? Um, let me check. If it is, I am all yeah. in on the Patriots. That is crazy. It's, yeah. it's at New England. And look, the, the Dolphins and... Uh, and they finally released Josh Rose, and now he's on a practice squad somewhere. That guy can't catch a break. He can't get on the field. I don't think he's good. He might not be. He's well, super liberal, and he's just a dick. Well, I don't know That's what, what I've heard behind the scenes. Being scene. liberal has to do with anything. But You're he, not good. You're a pussy. So <laughs> They're good liberal athletes. I don't think that plays a role. But Totally kidding. Um, the, the Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars are in a competition to see who can produce the worst football team of all time. Mm -hmm. Like, ever. And I'm not talking about going defeated, because that's happened. Yeah. But I'm talking about just being a shitty organization over the span of many, many years. There is an odd confidence, too, out of Foxborough with uh, Cam Newton there. Yeah. Cam Newton's got a lot of confidence. I don't know if it's the all Patriots fluff or not. I don't either, man. But I'm, I'm betting-wise, I'm in on it. And I'm going to take the Patriots at six and a half all goddamn day. Yeah. That is going to be a monster bet for me. That and the Bills game, I'm all in on those games. Fuck. I can't believe that. That is, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Philadelphia Eagles against the Washington football team. It's gonna be weird saying that all year round. I'm not but, saying uh, that. The Washington football team, uh, which actually I think they should just keep it. To be honest with you, I like the logos. I like mm. I like the shit. It's an unpopular opinion, but I like it. Fuck it. Uh, I like the Washington football team. It sounds like the Ohio State University. I'm in. I like the nickname. I'm I'm in it. Um, it's Philly minus six in this. Uh, look. It's going to be an upset for me. Calling it now. Um, I, I, I'd like Washington to go to the playoffs this year. I know that's fucking weird, man. But um, I think partially because Carson Wentz is injured already. Mm -hmm. He's got a soft tissue tear in his shoulder. Uh, Miles Sanders is the running back there. I was not high on him in fantasy football. No. Everybody else was drafting him around pick eight. Um, he's got some weird injury as well. I think Washington is a lot to prove. And uh, I, Haskins and, and Scary Terry, I've been watching them in fucking uh, preseason. Uh, not the games, obviously, mm -hmm. but their preseason practices. The connection is there, man. I, I think this team is all in, and they're super close. And, man, this is not the homer in me saying this, but when you have that many guys from Ohio State playing there who already know each other mm -hmm. already, there's a familiarity there. And I would say the same about anybody. If, if it was an all-Alabama team, I wouldn't give a shit. Um I'm going to take Washington in this. Like, I know that's crazy, but I, I think Washington wins this game. And I think Washington goes to the playoffs this year, the Redskins. Maybe. I mean, uh, they also drafted Bryce Love, by the way. 
Oh, the 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 other one, yeah, not the quarterback. Who, of, yeah, you know, I thought he may win the Heisman at some point. Yeah, like he's a very talented runner. I don't know what happened to him, but they've got they don't have any. They don't have a, uh, in my opinion, they don't have a great starting running back on that team. You've got Antonio Gibson, who's so, never played a game. Here, but Bryce here's, Love, here's the played. here's the weird thing. The biggest one of the biggest sleepers in fantasy this year, running back wise, is Antonio Gibson. Mm-hmm. He was going off the board very quickly for those in the know. Like I'm in some shitty leagues against people like, you know, the Drinking Bros underdog league. My my team is a fucking joke. Like it's it was like all my picks are first round picks, but mm-hmm. um in some of these deeper leagues, these championship leagues, Antonio Gibson was going quickly. And this was before the Adrian Peterson mm-hmm. situation. Um I think this kid's going to be really fucking good, man. And uh I'm going to take the Redskins this weekend. That's crazy. It's crazy, but I understand if you don't, for real. The Eagles have a good team, and if, if Carson Wentz is healthy, they should win this on paper, but uh, it's a, gut, like, it's a gut feeling, man. I don't think you can say that. I don't know. I don't think we know if that's the case or not because we don't know what – we don't know if Chase Young is going to be the same in Washington that uh, your boy was in, in uh, San Francisco. Like, is he going to be a complete game changer? Now, look, they brought pieces in around uh, – Yes. Like, in, like Richard Sherman and people like that. But, I mean, Chase Young, just putting that much pressure on the quarterback on a regular basis changes the entire team, the, the other team's entire game plan. Yep. You know what I mean? And I, and I know this is going to sound weird to say, but Chase Young is better than Nick Bosa. Uh, at least he was in college. And uh, uh, Yeah, I mean, he's faster and I don't know if he's as smart. Uh, like Because Bosa has been pretty decent at falling back into coverage and getting, yeah. getting picks. I think mm-hmm. he had like four picks or something last year. Well, it helps when your older brother and your dad both played professionally yeah. as well. And yeah. uh, look, but Chase so, Young is a freak but, of nature. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. When I say smarter, I mean, I don't know if he reads that part of the defense as well, but he's a better pass rusher for sure. Yeah. I don't I, think there's any question about that. Uh, I, look, they're going to be, to my opinion, they're going to be a fun game to watch. I mm-hmm. hope it says this game is on Fox. I hope it is. Um, I, yeah, I'm all in on Washington. Yeah, I'm not going to bet on this one. I, I, I am just because I, I want to see it. When I say all in on this game, let me clarify. The locks are New England and, uh, and Buffalo here. I'll, I will throw a hundred dollars on this game uh, for Washington. We bet a lot. Therefore, a hundred dollars is whatever man it just kind of washes out with the rest of this shit but uh yeah i'm gonna take the redskins man uh next up we got uh, the las vegas raiders been waiting to say that for a while uh against the carolina panthers two teams that uh hey man we have no idea to be honest with you um i have a hard time with this one and uh the reason being is teddy bridgewater is now the quarterback in carolina um i have because I won so many of my leagues, I'm, I was the number one draft pick in like three of them. I think I won three leagues last year. Mm-hmm. Um, McCaffrey's my dude. I obviously took him with one uh, in all of these leagues. Um, he's going to be great. Teddy Bridgewater was fine in uh, New Orleans. And I know they went 6-0, but New Orleans had a great team. Panthers don't have a great team. Um, the Raiders, I don't know who's going to show up for the Raiders. I don't know what's going to happen with David Carr this year. Derek. Derek, whatever. David Carr's dead. He's, he's dead, yeah. Uh, it's minus three for Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Going to Carolina, which is weird to me because usually that west to east shit doesn't mm-hmm. work out. But uh, I'm not touching this game, and I have no idea who wins. Um, and truthfully, unless my fantasy players are in this game, I don't watch it. I am uh, all in on this for the Raiders. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Let me ask you. Um, because you haven't heard shit out of the Raiders camp, which right. is always good news for them. They're invisible. Because Derek is Derek Carr is a very, like, he's not a very outspoken guy. When he gets dragged into the media, it's usually not for a good reason. Right. So I think things are going pretty well there. Also, Henry Ruggs III is probably the best receiver to come through there since Jerry Rice left. He is good. And they've got uh, Darren Waller, who I love at tight Waller, ends. They got Hunter Renfro, too. Josh Jacobs. And Josh Jacobs is a fucking pro bowler. I mean, uh, they got a great team. Yeah. I, th- I think they win this game by a touchdown at least. Um. I don't mind the pick. I just don't. I don't feel comfortable making it. Therefore, I'm not. Um, but uh, yeah, I, who knows? I don't know. McCaffrey could go off. Bridgewater could be the six and zero guy he was last year. Who mm-hmm. fucking knows? I don't believe that. Um, I never did last no, year it, either. That never works out. Matt Flynn. I agree. Didn't work out. Fucking Nick didn't work out. Big Dick Nick didn't work nope. out. Nope. These people. It, there's a there's a huge difference between coming in being something unexpected week to week over the course of a quarter or third of a season mm-hmm. than going into the playoffs and all that with the fucking hype and all that bullshit and being able to lead a team to the playoffs yeah. over 16 games. There's a big difference, and clearly people like Matt Flynn, 
he didn't even get the starting job. No. Nah. And uh, and and Nick Foles, people that have been taking chances on. Now, granted, he got hurt. Yeah. But even when he came back, they were like, "Nah, we're good." Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't. I don't think any of those guys. I think it's very obvious if you're going to be a great quarterback or not. People don't usually develop into great quarterbacks. Yeah. Late in their twenties, it yep. just doesn't happen like that. So yeah, I'm. I'm I, I think. Uh, I think McCaffrey's going to have a great game, and everybody else in Carolina won't. Probably. And and look, I. I just don't know enough about either of these teams yet for me to. It's the same thing with the uh, that game at the top of the show that I was talking about with um, uh, the Bears Lions. I don't know enough about who their their identity and who they're going to be yet. So mm -hmm. therefore, I'm just I'm going to sit this one out. But uh, you know, I hope McCaffrey has a has a big game for those guys. Uh, now the next one is the Colts and the Jaguars, and the Jaguars have already given up on the season. Yep. Um, I can't <laughs> believe it's it's at minus eight. I, for Indy, yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's. You know I, what? I, I, have, I, I if I'm setting these odds, I'm at nine and a half. Yeah. Oh, to easy. be honest, if I'm the if I'm the bookmaker, now I wouldn't bet nine and a half. I'll take eight though. Sure. Um. I, so here's the odd thing to me with this game, knowing what's happening, um, and Minshew, who I love, mm -hmm. obviously we're big fans on the show, um, knowing what he does and who he is, uh, I look at the over under of this game and I fall in love with it. Uh, the weather's going to be great in Jacksonville, and uh, you know you, you got uh, you got a guy who's just going to chuck the entire game. Mm -hmm. I think the Colt. I think you're right. I think the Colts win this game, obviously, um, but I think that Minshew will be chucking the entire game, and they will crush this over under forty five and a half. Uh, yeah, they'll probably beat that. Yeah, um, and that's what I'm looking for in this game. Uh, but I, I'm I'm with you. I think the Colts win, and I think the over under is going to be fun to watch. And uh, Minshew, I, fuck. I'd love to see his over under of passes. It's probably going to be fifty in this game. Like, who is the running back there? Ah, it's great. Leonard Fournette is gone. Yep. Um, therefore, it's this other fucking dude who uh, I don't know. Ryquell Armstead, who is out. Fantastic. Who's after that? Uh, <laughs> Chris Thompson. Oh, Chris Thompson. All right. So that's right. I drafted Chris Thompson with a flyer in round 15 in one of my leagues after the Fournette thing happened. So Chris Thompson, I will say this. Uh, he was with the Washington Redskins. Um, uh, Gruden was there. Mm -hmm. He's there now. So he's going to have a big role in this offense. He's a guy that you, uh, you dump out a lot of dump off passes to mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, that's going to mean some look garbage numbers for Minshew. If, uh, we're talking fantasy wise, and uh, and probably a pretty good game for Chris Johnson actually, or Chris Thompson actually. And um, look for Tyler Eifert in this game. The the uh, he's now the new tight end in Jacksonville. It's him, D D J Shark, D D D D D D D D Shark, and D D Westbrook. The three of those guys and mm -hmm. Chris Thompson points on the board. Man, I'm going over under on this uh, because I love it. Mm. Man, I want to feel real comfortable in this game going with the over under. Um, it'll be fun to watch. I'm, I like, look, I picked the Colts to go to the AFC Championships this year. Um, and I'm, I'm amped to watch this game, actually. It's going to be yeah. a dirty, nasty, methed out game down in Jacksonville. And I, uh, I'm amped about it. Um, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are awful. Yep. Next up, we get the Browns against the Ravens coming out with a heavy hitter on a Sunday like this. Two I, teams I, that hate each other. Yeah, I don't think this is a heavy hitter. I think the Browns are going to get fucking annihilated. In this well, game. it's minus eight. Yep. You're taking the Ravens in this. I'm game. taking the Ravens. I think it's going to be by ten at least. <sighs> I agree, and I'm going to I'm going to take the Ravens as this, and this as well. Uh, uh, the reason for for the big exhale here is because of Mayf Mayfield, Baker mm -hmm. Mayfield. Uh, if he's good, God damn it, the Browns' offense, man, is that's the best there is on paper this year. But he's not any good. So I don't know. Um, the rumor has it that uh, he learned some things last year. And um, Did he? Yeah. Did he, he learn how to be two inches taller? Because yeah. if not, then he's not going to succeed. I agree. Uh, Great. He, he uh, didn't get a growth spurt over no. the offseason. Didn't think so. By the way, the Browns had the 13th worst defense in the league last year. Yep. And it's not going to be any better this year. No. And uh, look, the Ravens have upgraded. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, dude, is going to have a monster year. I mean, you've got... Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, Lamar Jackson, 
And it, dude, Hollywood Brown is going to have a fucking monster year this year. That kid in year two, there's always wide receivers in year two, man, mm. um, that blow up. He's going to be one of them. And then they got fucking Andrews at tight end. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, J.K. Dobbins lining up in the slot a lot, too. Same. Like, to be honest, he is so goddamn fast. And and uh, uh, Harbaugh, the coach, came out and said, hey, man, we're going to be using Dobbins a lot. And yeah. he's like Hilaire, both yeah. of those guys, man. A lot of balls, dude. Uh, fun team. I'm with you, man. I'm going to take uh, the Ravens in this one. Uh, or if they're running split back. I mean, if they're going Ingram ooh. and Dobbins in the backfield together. Oh, oh. How pure do you, sex. Yeah, you can't stop that. I don't shit. know how you stop it. Because even if they don't hand off, Lamar Jackson can just Hell. go around the end and butt puck, fuck people's lives. By here. the way, the Ravens third best defense in the league I drafted them in fantasy so, in about half my leagues i got the bills they were the second best yeah bills are got a great defense as well man which is again that minus six and a half for the bills is crazy to yeah me. nuts uh against Durr? yeah sam darnold Durr? uh he's back and he's gonna re remain in that nickname until uh he actually wins a fucking game uh chargers at the bengals uh a matchup of two teams that no one cares about you know watching joe burrow actually will, will be fun um i'm curious to see how he's gonna do uh, all of the veterans have said he's picked up the offense extremely well, and he looks like he's been doing it for mm. 30 years. Um, I think age has a lot to do with that. He's also a year older than pretty much every quarterback coming out because he, he took a year off to go to uh, uh, transfer to, to LSU. Mm -hmm. So he's 23 instead of, you know, like these other kids. Uh, this is the Chargers minus three in this game. Eesh, I don't touch this I game. I don't give two fucks about this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to force myself to have to even – acknowledge that this game is happening mm -mm. and that's what i would be doing so no not doing that no um i am uh although i'm, I'm i game. guess i'm i there's some morbid curiosity to see how burrows does same here i want to see how burrows, guess, joe burrow does but i can just watch the highlights for that i don't need to fucking watch that whole shit again no no this is a four o'clock game yeah no need for that bro there's better games on at mm -hmm. four o'clock like this this next one Buccaneers Saints it's it's I think this is really good on behalf of the NFL to schedule this game two of the best quarterbacks of this generation the the absolute best and mm -hmm. one of the other best going head to head in week one this is a good decision it's a great great game and uh no doubt this will be the uh national uh nationally televised game on uh on Sunday that that, that four o'clock slot there um I don't agree with this spread though New Orleans minus three and a half I mean maybe if what are they going capacity wise at their at, at Mercedes Benz? Because that's a that could get a, that could be a loud place. It's a hard place to play. I believe twenty five percent. We've got look, we've got tickets on DrinkingBrosTickets dot com for it, but they're really high. I mean, even the nosebleeds. Because look, New Orleans fans are diehard. They are even for the sure. Nosebleeds are going I mean, for like three hundred dollars a piece. The man. three the three loudest stadiums or arenas I've ever been in: Mercedes Benz. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights mm -hmm. arena, and then obviously the Kansas City Chiefs yes. is loud as fuck. Yes, yes, yes. I think decibel level Arrowhead is the loudest, loudest. of all time. Oh, for sure. But I couldn't fucking hear you for for yeah for you were sitting next to me. In a, when, when you put it in a dome like that, just the reverberation of the audio and stuff makes it very difficult to run a normal offense if you're the opposing team. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, man. The Saints have gone through a lot of turmoil this off season, and. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't know what the Kamara situation is. Um, the Alvin Kamara situation is he sat out last week. He was out of three practices, mm -hmm. and you know he's your guy there. And uh, they did pick up Emmanuel Sanders. It's gonna be a fun ass game to watch. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a field goal game either. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm gonna take the Buccaneers with that half a point. It's that half a point that's really got me on this one. And I'm gonna take Tom Brady just because he's Tom Brady, and uh, and that offense could be pure sex. Yeah, I'm good with that. That they put on the field. I'm going to take the Buccaneers plus that three and a half. Now, if that hook isn't in there, I probably don't take this game because uh, it's a push or I buy a half a point. But uh, it is in there. Therefore, I'm going to take the Buccaneers in this one. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this game. Uh, combined age for both starting quarterbacks is 86 years old. Um, mm. Or the age of Joe Biden. So uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch for sure. Uh, next up, we get the Cardinals against the 49ers. Uh it's in San Francisco. Um, I like how little respect Jimmy Garoppolo gets. Like it's a it's minus seven. Yeah, 49ers, and yep. they should win this game by fucking ten points. More than that. I mean, but you have to expect even with that defense, homeboy's going to get some points on the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and the 49ers, I mean, you, 
Everybody but Garoppolo is good on that team. Yes. It's so hilarious. here's what I'm going to do with this one. Um, is this still at seven on mybookie.com? Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to buy a half a point here just in case uh, and take San Francisco. But I'm going to put I'm going to put probably two or three hundred bucks on this. Um, I think I think San Francisco beats them by a touchdown at least. So therefore, at six and a half, I feel fine with this. Um, DeAndre Hopkins has been sitting out of practices in Arizona because he mm. wants a fucking new contract. Bro, you just got traded. Like, give them a second before you start asking for a new contract. Yeah, let's see what next Jesus season is even going to look like. Christ. First. Yeah, or if there's going to be one. Um, so that's not a good way to start off. And uh, I, for that reason, man, I got the 49ers. Um, Do you think the 49ers defense is overrated? No. I mean, so the Patriots' don't. points per game last year was 14. The mm-hmm. 49ers was 19.4. Well, right. here, I, here is a list of teams that gave up less points than the 49ers, the Chiefs, Steelers, Vikings, Bears, Ravens, and Bills, and Patriots, right, all of them. Right. I, I'll tell you why. So there was a ton of garbage time games for the 49ers. They were up, man. Um, look, I watched a lot of their games last year because uh, I, well, I hated them, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, but uh, I had uh, Matt Breida was in a lot of my leagues. Um, I think he's great. He's just a motherfucker. Can't stay healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in a lot of my leagues, so I watched a lot of 49ers games last year. They were up by so many points at halftime in a lot of these games. I mean, what do they? They finished like 13 and three or something, right? Uh, yeah, they did well. Yeah, I Good mean, season. a great season. Um, and a lot of these games were blowouts, just absolute blowouts. And then they took their defense off the field. So mm-hmm. it's hard to say. It's hard to say what their real numbers would have been because, like, you take a team like the Bills, mm. their defense was forced to play the entire game, whereas. Mm. I, look, man, they were trying to keep Bosa and these guys fresh. So I don't know. Um, but uh, I can for, I can for certain say in this, though, this is a lock at six and a half. I'm going to buy a half a point. I'm going to take um, the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take it at seven. Okay. I I, I'm going to buy a half just, just in case. I don't care about the push, but I, there's no way they're going to lose. Just in case. Um, Sunday night game is the Cowboys against the Rams. I'm really confused as to why this was the Sunday night game and not the Buccaneers versus the Saints. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, look, the Cowboys versus somebody else would have been a great Sunday night game, but the fucking Rams? Like, who's even left there? Uh, Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Brandon Cooks Half is their gone. their defense, yeah. Brandon Cooks is gone. Uh, Cooper Cup's still there, Robert Woods, but... They've got uh, Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald and yeah. uh, Jalen Ramsey still, but uh, they lost half the other defense because, look, they went all in. Contra, uh, contract wise the last two years to win a Super Bowl it did not pan out and and they got fucked mm. so they had to let a, b- a bunch of guys go and trade a bunch of guys Gurley is out of there I don't know who their starting running back is because Daryl Henderson's injured um I, I I don't know but uh what I'm what I do know is this I'm taking the Cowboys I'm gonna buy a half a point and take this to two and a half and go all in on the Cowboys I believe in the Cowboys this year um and I think they're gonna have a, a monster season if they shit the bed though this first week there's going to be the biggest fucking deflation mm-hmm. uh, of Cowboys fans. We're just no, like, I'm, uh. this this minus three is ridiculous. It's um, crazy that Cowboys have so many offensive weapons. I know, and they got CD um, Lamb now too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm 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 taking it at, at minus three. I think it should be way higher than that. I agree, but uh, and there is no home field advantage in, no. in, in not in LA. LA, not in LA at all, but not ever. With, even with twenty five percent fan base, I don't think there's really that much of a fucking. Are they doing any fans? I don't. I'm not sure that they are, to be honest with you. In L. A. Probably not. Yeah. Right. It's California shit. I'm going Cowboys, man, all, all day on this. Uh, I love this game. There's a lot of great bets this weekend. Uh, so I'm going Cowboys at two and a half. I'm still gonna buy a half just to be safe uh, because it can. Uh, next up for the Monday night games, a doubleheader. I love that they do this every year. I love a good old fashioned doubleheader in NFL on a Monday night. Um, now, these are two terrible teams that they're starting off with. Mm. <laughs> the Steelers against the Giants. Uh, it is, it is uh, Steelers minus five and a half um, on this one, and uh, rightfully so. Look, I think Roethlisberger is going to have a, a good year. Mm. And um, the Steelers are a top 10 defense, too. They are. Um, I'm going to give the uh, – should I be doing this or not? Yeah, fuck it, I will. Um I'm going to give the, the listeners some insights, a uh, little little inside info here, a little insight on the, the Giants. We were supposed to have Golden Tate on the show. Um, he is injured, and he's getting treatment. Uh, I don't know that he plays this game. It is a hamstring injury. Uh, I don't know how much that's being reported either, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to play. 
he's their best wide receiver there. Uh, they got Darius Slayton, who had a great year last year, who I drafted. Um, and they got Evan Ingram, who's good, and Saquon mm-hmm. Barkley, obviously. And we'll see how Danny Dimes is in year two. But that defense, I don't know a single soul on that team. And, mm-hmm. um, man, it's, uh, it's up to six. I, no, I, I'm telling you, I'm a lot of people are betting Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with six. I, Pittsburgh wins by a touchdown. Yeah. I'm going to take this game, and I'm going to take the Steelers. But uh, I don't know if Golden Tate plays either. So, hey, man. Um, it is what it is. The Steelers. I, I think the Steelers have a bounce back here. I do. I think they're going to do pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm taking the Steelers. Uh, last but not least, to cap off the weekend, Titans versus Broncos. There is no spread on on uh, on ESPN. Do you have one there? And I'm assuming it's because of the Jadavian Clowney signing that just happened uh, hours ago for the Titans and Broncos. Yes. It's a pick 'em. It is a pick 'em. A true pick 'em. PK. No shit. PK. Um, this is in Denver. Not that that matters, but uh, <sighs> Titans are so hard to bet on because they're such a one-dimensional team. Look, they run the fucking ball every goddamn mm. play. Uh, Clowney doesn't need to be there, clearly. Um, we saw this happen last year with uh, uh, Homeboy going to Chicago. Yeah. Um, you know, I... <sighs> I'd say Titans, but uh, I don't know. They they're using him, to, so they run a three four. So he's going to be an outside linebacker, which means Clowney's going to have to drop back in coverage too. Or no, he's, I'm sorry, he's he's probably going to be uh, a inside linebacker. So he's going to have to drop back in coverage sometimes. I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't either, to be honest. Like this is a weird defense for him. He's a he's a four three guy. I'm, I don't know. Not that it really matters. You could still use him as one of the uh, the down rushers, but this is the way they have this depth chart set up. Not entirely sure that's going to work out for Tennessee. No, and look, the Broncos have a good defense. Um, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm going to sit this game out, actually. Uh, I don't know. I, look, I, I and partially because I, I like the Broncos team this year. Mm. I think Drew Locke is, is, can be great. He showed flashes of greatness last year. Uh, they got Jerry Judy out there. Uh, they got Melvin Gordon now this year. Mm. Um, with Philip Lindsay backing him up. I mean, that's a fucking two-headed monster in the backfield. And then uh, you got Cortland Sutton, uh, Noah Font, is their tight end. They've got mm-hmm. a great young team, and that defense is still great for the Broncos. Yeah. The de- look, the defense is good for the Titans too, man. But the and, and Derrick Henry is always a beast, but he doesn't really get going to the second half of the season. So <sighs> gut says Broncos, but I, not enough to to tell the audience to actually physically go out and spend their American dollars on this. I'm gonna sit out this game. I will probably bet it Monday night. Join Drinking Bro Sports on Facebook, and you can see all my bets. I, I will put up a bet of some form, I'm, I'm sure, on Monday mm. uh, because of the junkie in me, but uh, that's about it. So Alvin Kamara just said, like people were asking him in the locker room today mm-hmm. um, about him being, about him holding out, and he says, I ain't never held out in my life, which is weird because he's not practiced for four days. Right. Um, but he said, I came to the building every day, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, I, I fully expect him to play. Um, but what that does to the team in the meantime um, is strange, man. I, I that, That's why we're taking the Bucks in that game. But, uh, you know, uh, to me, the Saints are in fucking turmoil this year. That Drew Brees bullshit, too, that's going to continue to go on for the rest of the year. Yeah. The other day, good. he had the fucking name of a rapist on his helmet. Like, what are, yeah. we, what are we doing, Drew? Uh, we're talking about overcompensating. Yeah. for white guilt. This same kind of thing happened last year with the uh, Cowboys, though, because Z- Ezekiel Ella was holding yeah. out until basically yeah, yeah, the yeah. week before. And, and you uh, see what happens. They end up being shitty. Yeah. No, they Well, they won the first three games, but it was against the Giants, Redskins, and fucking Dolphins. Right. And then once they played real teams, they lost to New Orleans uh, and Green Bay back-to-back, and then they got fucking beat by the goddamn Jets. Yeah. So I, I, we, I think we called it we, sometime between week six and seven is where he would really start performing. But he had... 100 yard games against two shitty teams. And then he went back down to 35 yeah. once they played a real defense. A real team. And um, this is a real team. So yeah. I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Bucks in this one. And, and that Broncos game, I'm not going to touch until Monday. Uh, cruise on over to Drinking Bro Sports on Facebook. And um, uh, you can see the bet there. Because I, I, again, it's Monday. I'm sure we'll throw something in it mm-hmm. because it's the opening week. Uh, in the meantime, uh, join us Saturday afternoon at Whiskey Tango Foxtrot in downtown Austin for the live show. Starting at 1 p.m., we'll be raging until about uh, 5.36 and then heading over to the game at 7 o'clock to see uh, uh, the opening of the college football season for the Power Five uh, with the Texas Longhorns. 
Um, as always, bet with us or against us on mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will double your deposits and uh, should be fun, D'Anthony. Um, I got a quick Drinking Bro of the week, really quick. Um, this one is, uh, is actually going to go out to Matt Devlin. Uh, Matt Devlin is a day one homie, man, from uh, not only Drinking Bros, but Ross Patterson Revolution, and his father passed away mm. um, uh, a few days ago. And uh, he was a state trooper up there in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And um, look, Matt Devlin's a great guy, and uh, he loved his dad, and uh, actually reached out to him and called him uh, uh, over the weekend and uh, just to check on him, see how he was doing. I saw his post in Drinking Bros. And uh, man, I'm sorry. Um, losing a father is, is a very hard thing and, uh, therefore we're making you drinking bro of the week, uh, this week. Uh, we actually made his dad drinking bro of the week somewhere in the episodes of like 200s. Mm. Um, so again, long time listener to the show and, uh, he's always supported everything we've done and we are supporting him now, uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. Come to the game with us. If you're in Austin, Texas, yep. dude, go to drinkingbrostickets.com. It's live. Uh, we are in section 15. Join us if you want to rage with us. Uh, we'll be drinking shit tons of seltzer, whatever that is there. Whatever happens to be there. I heard now. there's a fucking vodka bar there now. At Deep Eddie's? Yes, yeah. dude. I heard there's a Deep Eddie's bar. Well, I'll just drink Power Claws then. Yeah. I'll get, I'll right get in my the stadium. I'll get my claws and then go over there and have them put a little extra vodka in Ooh. there. Ooh. Join us. Join us this weekend. It'll be fun. Uh, for Dan and Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone.